In this video, we're going to look at something called Green's Theorem, which is a super important theorem that relates line integrals and double integrals. So let's look at the statement, and then we'll look at some of the terms within the statement, and then we'll do a proof in a very um, simple case. So uh, the statement goes like this. So let's let C be a positively oriented, piecewise smooth, simple closed curve bounding the region D. If P and Q are con have continuous partial derivatives on an open region containing D, then this line integral over C of P dx plus Q dy, and notice I've put a little loop here, that's because C is a closed curve. This isn't necessary, but often when C is a closed curve, we put a loop in there in the integral to indicate that. And notice that this is really a um, line integral over the vector field P i plus Q j, or the vector p q and then that's equal to the double integral over the region d of d q dx minus d p dy da okay so some of the terms in this statement are simple closed curve so this is a curve that's simple that's not closed so notice it does not bound a region that's the hallmark of a closed curve so notice this curve bounds a region in the middle of it which we would maybe call d and sometimes c is called um, del d the boundary of d this is not a simple curve notice it's self intersecting on itself away from its endpoints and now uh, that covers everything except for positively oriented. So positively oriented means you have parameterized the curve in a way so that if you walk in the direction of the parameterization, the curve is, uh, sorry, the region is on your left. So notice if we were to walk along that curve, the region D would be on our left. And so this is in general like a counterclockwise uh, parameterization. Okay, so now let's go ahead and clean up the board and then we'll do a very special case of the proof. Okay, so now we're gonna look at a very special case of the proof of this theorem and that case is the following. So D can be represented as a type one and two region. And you see we'll get like half of this equality from the type one region and the other half from the type two region. So let's first look at, uh, at representing D as a type one region, which means D can be written as the coordinates X and Y, and here X is going to be between two functions of X, and I should have said Y is between two functions of X, and then X, is between two numbers, A and B. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw a picture of what that looks like. I'll put it all in the first quadrant, although obviously this could be much more general. So let's say here is our point A, here's our point B. We could make our curve G1 do something like that. So I'll go ahead and call this thing Y equals G1. And then we could make G2 do something like that. So I'll go ahead and call this thing uh, y equals uh, g2 of x. And then uh, notice these points at the corner are gonna be pretty important. So I'll call this g1 of a. Up here will be g2 of a. This is uh, g2 of b. And then down here is g1 uh, of b. Great. And then also important are these vertical lines connecting these points. So that makes our region D inside here, like this. Great. And now let's give some names uh, to these boundary curves. So we could call this one C1, we could call this one C2, we could call this one C3, and we could call this one C4. And then if we want to orient this so that it's positively oriented, then um, we should orient it so we're going up along this curve, left along this curve, down along this curve, and right along this curve. And notice that will put the region D to our left. And now let's parameterize each of these curves. So uh, notice C1 can be parameterized in the following way. So R1 of T, we'll write this as a vector equation. So notice we can take T to be the X coordinate, and then we can take uh, G1 of T to be the Y coordinate. And then T is going to range between A and B. 
Good, so that will start here and it'll end there just as needed. Now let's look at uh, C2. So notice C2, we can parameterize with this thing R2. And here, the B, sorry, the X coordinate is fixed at the number B. And then the Y coordinate is trending between G1 of B and G2 of B. So maybe we could say that's T. And then now T is going between G1 of B and G2 of B. Like that. Good. And now let's look at C3. So C3. So that'll be this top curve right here. So notice, again, we're on the plane curve, y equals g2 of x, kind of similar to what we did here before, but we're going in reverse. So I'm actually gonna abuse notation in this case, and I'll essentially write the same thing that we had for r1. I'll say this is t, g2 of t. Notice that's gonna put us on this curve, but we wanna go in reverse, which means we want t to start at b and go to a. Okay, so now that doesn't really make any sense as an interval, but if we interpret it as just reversing this thing, then we're okay. Um, okay, so next, uh, we want C4, which is going to be R4 of T. Notice the X value is fixed at A, and then uh, the Y value will run between G2 of A and G1 of A, just as before. Okay, great. So now we're actually all set in order to show that our Green's theorem is starting to be built out of this process. So let's go ahead and take the double integral over D of uh, minus DP DY DA. Okay, so since this is a type one region, we can write this as uh, uh, the integral from A to B, the integral from minus, G, sorry, from G1 of X to G2 of X, and then we have minus DP DY DY DX. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in pink parentheses uh, that innermost iterated integral. But now we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to that inner integral and have the partial with respect to y cancel with this y. Um, and also, maybe before we do that, let's take this minus sign and use it to change the order of the bounds of integration. So now g2 is on the top and g1 is on the bottom. Okay, so that's going to give us uh, the integral from a to b of the function p of x, y evaluated from y equals g2 of x all the way up to y equals g1 of x, like that. Okay, but uh, now we can write that dx, but notice this is exactly equal to um, the integral from a to b of p of x g1 of x uh, minus p of um, x g2 of x dx. Okay, good. So now we're running out of room, but we actually don't have much. So I'm gonna erase these couple of steps in the middle and bring that up, and then we'll finish this off. Okay, so just previously we had gotten it down to this point. So we have the integral from a to b of p of x comma g1 of x dx minus the integral from a to b of p of x comma g2 of x dx. So I split that into two integrals. Now the next thing that I wanna do is maybe, let's go ahead and replace the x's with t's just to really force the fact uh, of what we're doing. And notice that this is equal to the integral from a to b of p of t, uh, g1 of t, and then dt. And then I'm gonna take that minus sign and switch the order of integration to the integral from b to a of p of, again, t, g2 of t, uh, dt. 
But now, notice that this guy right here is just the line integral over C1, and this is the line integral over C3 of P dx. So that means they can add together to be the line integral over C1 plus C3 of P dx. Okay, fantastic. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is add zero into this, but the version of zero I'm going to add is going to be the line integral over C2 and C4 of P dx. So let's argue why that is zero. So notice on C2, the x coordinate's never changing. On C4, the x coordinate is also never changing, which means the dx component, which recall that's dx dt dt, will always be zero. So let's just point that out here. This thing is always equal to zero. So really we've added zero here. But now notice that um, we can mash those two things together to be the integral over C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4, but that's exactly going to be the line integral over the whole thing, C of P dx. Okay, great. So, now the next thing that I want to do is uh, erase the board and then we'll summarize what we have and what we could also get from very similar strategies. So what we just did was, after assuming that D can be expressed as both a type 1 and type 2 region, we expressed it as a type 1 region and we saw that the line integral over C of P dx was equal to the double integral over D of the partial of P with respect to Y dA, and that's negative. But very, very similarly, in fact, almost exactly the same uh, except for switching a P with a Q and X's with Y's, we can express this thing as a type 2 region and find out that the double integral over C, sorry, the line integral over C of Q dY is the double integral over d of dq dx da. And here there's no minus sign, but I'll leave it to you to look into the details of why you don't get a minus sign in this case. So now what we can do is just add both sides of the left hand, now we can just add the two left hand sides of these equations and the two right hand sides of this equation and we get exactly what we need for Green's theorem. Okay, so uh, now we're done, and in a forthcoming video, we'll look at a verification example of this theorem.